2013 and I'm taking us back to 2007 when I went down to Cornwall to look for Zara's ancestors and I'm going around some villages um, around St Austell area and I'm off to a place called Probus where I do actually find a grave, a Barbary grave, while I'm there and I have found out a lot more about them since. In fact, it's 2013 now, and since 2007, I've made ginormous discoveries. But this is in the earlier days, not the early day, but when I was just starting the research down in Cornwall for Zara's ancestors, and a lot's been discovered since. You'll have to wait for that. You'll have to find it on the tree. Right, here we go. Over to the tape, the cassette tape recording, 2007, Probus. Right, I found Probus. Drove up and down the village a few times so I could find the hidden car park. It's not far from the church though, and it does give you a chance to walk through the villages to get the feel. I saw a sign for Ladcock, which is only two and a half miles away from here, so everything's within range. Um, so I'm off now. Park me by. Um, The Hawkins Arms. I took a picture of that with the church in the background. It's quite a majestic church, quite big as well. The National Express, Express coaches come through here. So you've got a fish and chip shop and a spa. Right, I'm at the church now, Probus Parish Church. And so I'm just going to go down and look inside the church before I do anything else. But like I said, it's a big church, quite decorative as well, from the outside. Quite grand. Right, the church is named after a saint called St. Probus, who was a Roman Briton. I um, can't remember if it was in the 800 BC or something like that. Um, and it was later on in 1450s, the church was built in the perpendicular style. There had been one here before, of course. They got the old stocks inside the porch there. Uh, there's a children's service this afternoon, about two o'clock I think they said. Yeah, it's a grand looking church, that's what I thought. Oh, back of the tower end, um, back in onto the road, is a little thatched cottage. Really quaint. Oh my goodness, this church is just massive. I'm going to be here a while, I think. Come around the other side, and there's loads of graves. I don't know where to start at the moment. I'm just going to um, I'll take a picture of that cottage. I think somebody might have lived in it once. All right, at the back of the church, I'm walking up a broad pathway to the back gate entrance. Um, I haven't decided when I'm going to start my clockwork. Uh, clockwise search yet. I'm just having a look round. Little windy lanes. It's quite warm now. I'm going to start it here and end up at this back gate, I think. So I'm going to go back down looking, leading up to the back of the church door, starting clockwise, walk, working round the church like we always do. I thought I'd start in a corner rather than in the middle. Um, I'm 
just scan in each side now as I go. Yeah, this is an ancient place, Probus. It goes back a long time, it's got lots of history here. If the Romans got here, and they had a saint here as well. Like I said earlier, my theory is the Barbaries are more Penzance way. And that branch of them came up this way. Because it's not a very common name, you don't, you don't see it. You don't see them. I could do some names. Chapman, Bennett, that's a common name here. A lot of Bennett, some Chapmans. Huddy, quite a common name. I found a Hodge grave here. Thomas, husband of Jane Hodge, who died in 1898-72. Also William Reginald, dearly beloved husband of Elizabeth J. Hodge. And also Jane who died in May the 20th, 1923. Popped up against the wall like the other church. There's a lot of slate ones. More readable than um, the other ones. They're not covered in moss or anything. Right, at the front of the church, I can't find any. I'm now going down the side. Not the tower, in the opposite end of the tower. At the side. Toilets here, it's brilliant in here. The toilet just off the graveyard. Oh, there's a very fascinating tomb. I'll have to take a picture of it. It's got like four men dressed like Oliver Cromwell, with one knee bent to the floor, as if they're holding up the tomb of somebody. I'll go and read that one in a minute. I'll just read the graves in front of them first. Right, these figures like Cromwell, it says to the memory of the Hawkins family of Chewithan, Christopher Hawkins Barr, who died 1829, his mind was full of inventive power which was directed towards the development of industrial enterprise in this county. Something Jihad, 1914. Or is it Jabad? I don't know. J B H A D. That's that. Well, I guess what? I have found a Barbary at Probus. Hello, hello, hello. Found one. It's behind the back of the church. Probably about 20 yards from the church in the middle of a, a patch. It's a low stone it's got, um, with a surround. Looks like somebody did put something on it one time. There are those little, underneath this little green pebbly things. It's got an urn on there. Anyway, it's in loving memory of Arthur Henry Barbary, dearly beloved husband of Ellen, who died January the 12th, 1959, aged 72, and also his wife Ellen, who died April the 23rd, 1974. So I'll take a picture of that. That's a good one. There's no stones either side of it. There are some bennets in front and some teaks. Um, behind there's a Henry Pollard. I'm just having a look around and see if I can see any other. So that is good. We found one here. And one is better than none. And that's... I may try wondered. I could have easily missed that one. But I may try wondered. Other than just scan, I didn't have really went into the, walked into it. Yeah, backing onto that one is behind it, d dead behind it, if you know what I mean, is um, John Beedham George Pomery. He died in 1921, aged 64, and Harriet Ann, his wife, who died in 1923, aged 59. So that's behind the Barbary grave. Still looking. There's also um, in the same row, but at least ten up, going towards the back wall of the church, is Norman Pierce, who died at Benton, Clare, in 1890, 
Clidder, July the 11th, 1926. I don't know if he's related at all. Also an Elizabeth Jane Pierce up far away, same place. Died 1946. When you've got Pierce's and Barbary's together, it's worth uh, writing them down. So we found one. I'm going to take a picture of it with the church in the background from a, dis from a distance. Oh yeah, by the way, that Barbary is spelt like the Devon ones. B-A-R. B-A-R-E. No, it hasn't got any. I, from a distance it looked like it had an E. No, it's a Barbary, yeah. Of course, if there's one Barbary in there, I bet there, there will be others. But um, the older ones, the Peters that were from long ago, if they're this way, they won't be showing. Of course, they're not all visible. Some are hidden under brambles. Not many, though. It's quite, it's quite well cleared, this is. I've got a miners here, so I've got to do this one. In loving memory of Ernest, beloved husband of Annie Miners, who died July the 24th, 1943, aged 57. Also Annie, she died aged 75 in 1962. Hotton and Huddy seem to be common names here. The surname Henry seems to keep cropping up as well. Pascos as well everywhere. They're quite seem to be quite common. Right, I'm right up in the far corner of the church now. I'll take a picture of it from here. There's a little gateway that leads out somewhere as well. Oh, it's turning out very much like some of the other churches where I managed to find one. Which makes it worthwhile as well coming. Because it continues the link with the place, basically, if you find one. Especially when I get back and I dig into that person, you know, the census, find out more about them then. That's the good thing. It's not the end of it. It's not the end of it. Start of it. Once I got their names and a few people around them. I've nearly finished this one now. I'm being quite thorough as well, I'm not just scanning. I'm weaving in and out of them all. Looking and searching, like if that's how I found that Barbary. I went up and down the rows. Well, it's a massive graveyard. It would take you weeks to go up and down the rows, so like the London ones, I had a map. This you can sort of get round in an hour. You could still miss one. It's happened to me at Borough Green. Well, I missed the oaks in the beginning. First trip, we missed them. Um, as I say, I've left no stone unturned. Unturned. There are variations in the spelling of Barbary. Some have an E. Some have an E A. Some have an A. I'm going at the back gate now. If you look over the back gate, there's a big green fern tree. And you can see the little gravestone of the Barbary. There's taller ones all around it, but it's quite safe in the ground there. Like I said, possibly people visit it. All I've got to do now is find the link. Right, I'm now walking down a little road. Oh, there's a pump. I'll take a picture of that little pump next to the church. Because it's little features like that pump that will disappear eventually. Oh, right, this looks like a an expanding village to me. We've got the site, the pub, the church and the square bit. And then it's sort of spreading out along the road. Anyway, I'm off to Ladcock next. We're getting there, we're getting round. Anyway, we're off to Ladcock next. When we've been
Vinter Ladcock from Progress. <coughs> we have to come back down because we've got to go to the very end, so very end. So we have to come back down and go on the A3078 and then branch off when we see Port Low and um, places like that on the way to St. Moore's. At St. Virion, we've got the Peter Barbary, 1752 Meriden Anne or a Jane Gen Jennings. This is at St. Virion. There's also a Peter Barbary, born 1733, who married a Hannah Minor in 1758. So that's the, the St. Viren people. Right, I'm on my way out of Provost now, going towards um, Ladcock on Chapel Street. Right then, we'll do Ladcock on another recording. On another audio pod from the cassette tape recorder. So over and out for now. Okay folks, this is Sheila. It's um, March 2024, quite some years after this recording. This narration was originally done with photos. Um, in those days we, I only had an Instamatic camera which held, could take 26 at a time. It was quite an expensive thing to buy the film for a fiver, get it developed for a fiver, unlike today with our mobile phones where we can take hundreds of images. So what I've had to do, because I only found about five that I'd taken from back in 2007, I because um, I didn't have a proper working camera either at that time with a roll of film or anything. So it was Instamatic camera and a handheld tape recorder, a cassette recorder, for doing the audio pod. So what I've had to do is um, shared photos from other people on various sites online. I've added some just to enrich the whole process really while people are listening to the narration. Saved in space and time or time and space and will be placed on Zara's um, family tree site who has Cornish and Devonshire and f and more, of course, on my side, you know, Suffolk, Cambridge, London, all sorts. But um, I'm s homing in here on her Cornish ancestry, located in many villages around Probus, Laddock, St. Yew, St. Moor, St. Mewen, St. Austell, uh, Mevagissi, Pinchuan. All these are places where Zara's ancestors, the Barbaries, spelt sometimes various but three different ways so basically I've, I've borrowed shared images just to enrich the experience and then the next video I'm going to is to examine um, a Ladock now I haven't listened to some of these recordings myself since maybe 2013 and I'm adding the recordings to YouTube then I would gather the web links which will then be placed on Zara's ancestral tree where people looking at her tree and her descendants and various people in the Barbary tree if they want can listen to them like I said the narration has been saved in time and space it's an individual thing where I went off in my VW camper van around Cornwall and Devon on behalf of Zara in 2007 and other years actually there's quite a few recordings to be added yet plus in later years of course I had a video a Sony video camera so there also on her site will be video proper video images I've done of villages graveyards churches all on the trail of her ancestors for her and I've done this in my own tree all over the UK um, I have actually done this. Zara's got brothers and sisters, and she ha they, um, she's got her father, but some of her brothers and sisters had a different mother and a different father. Okay? Because both me and her dad married different people in the end. So Zara's got half brothers and sisters, and I'm locating in, um, things for them 
around the country as well. So this is Sheila in 2024, over and out.